nerve block from my pain specialist. This was me due to being out of options for pain medications because of all the side effects that come with them. And the current pain medications that I am on, I'm already on the highest dose, so we can't go anywhere else with those. My specialist didn't want to start me on opioids because, well, they don't always work. They come with side effects and they can be very addictive. I was happy to go along with this. He offered to implant another neuromodulator into my body, but considering that I already have two, there would be a big challenge on trying to find a space where the battery would be able to sit. And there's also the considerations that the two neuromodulators that I already have, the wires go up and down my spine and take up most of that space in that area. So if there was a third neuromodulator, it would be really, really, really squashy to try and get some more wires up and down my spine. The main aim of this splenic nerve block for me is because of the pain that I get in my stomach, which is due to my gastroparesis and SMAS. Now, although these are being treated and monitored, the pain that comes with this is definitely not under control. I cannot eat or drink without getting very big pains in my stomach, which makes life quite hard at times and very uncomfortable. The pain can last for hours, sometimes days. I do have medications for these two conditions and these medications do come with side effects, but I do put up with the side effects in this case because what the medication does, it does help a little bit. And I would prefer that little bit of help and some side effects than no help at all. I am suffering every day and sometimes all day for days on end. My pain specialist did inform me that this sort of treatment has probably a 50-50% chance of working. For some people, it works brilliantly and they can have relief for the rest of their lives. Others will get a few months worth of relief. And then there's others who have absolutely no results at all. Because of the stage of the pain that I am at at the moment, and I'm just so sick of it, and just want to try anything that could possibly help, I'm willing to give this treatment a go. I kind of figure the worst that will happen is I'll be in exactly the same position as I was before I get this treatment done. And although my bank account will be a bit lighter because this treatment is very expensive, I still think that it's worth taking a chance. Here I am just waiting for my procedure. I really hope that this works. Getting ready, looking my absolute finest. I'm dressed now. I had to turn off my neuromodulators for this procedure and I didn't know how to do it because I've never done that before. But now I know that there is a button up the top here that turns them on and off. Back online. 
be the same for the second one. Well, I have just arrived home after a massive day at the hospital because today was the day that I finally got my splenic nerve block done. This has been postponed three times. Once was, I can't even remember why it was that long ago. And then the next time, I think I was sick or something happened. And then the third time when I was due to get it done is when I broke my arm. So I wasn't allowed to even go near the hospital until my arm had completely healed. And then a month after that healing before they would see me. So because my arm took 20 weeks to heal, then that actually turned into a 24 week wait that I had to endure before I got this procedure done. I was up at 3.30 this morning so I could get myself ready and then drive three hours to get to the hospital by 7am. And I was a little bit late, but oh well. I'll just blame all of the potholes that are on the road at the moment and all of the roadworks and all of the slow drivers. After I'd had the procedure done, it took me a very long time to wake up. Like it seemed an excessive amount of time to wake up and they couldn't figure out why, but they just let my body do whatever it does. It likes to do things in its own sweet time, but eventually, I did wake up and the first thing I asked for was sandwiches and coffee. So they were very speedy in getting me my request. And once I was able to have those, I started to wake up a bit more and I felt a little bit better. While I was hanging out in recovery, I didn't really know what I was thinking. I had parts of my back, I guess, where the needles had gone in to my spine. And they were kind of itchy, but I was a bit scared to scratch them so I just have been putting up with that ever since that started and then my back is very sore but I guess that's all should have been predicted since they put needles and probes and electrical pulses and everything onto bits of my spine and the splenic nerves and then as for my stomach, which is the whole purpose of this procedure to try and make my stomach not hurt as much, I haven't really felt any different yet. So I have to monitor for two weeks and hopefully over that two weeks, I will see some improvement. And I can't really properly walk up straight at the moment either because everything just feels so tight and sore and I don't even know if that's the right way to describe it. It just feels weird. So I actually have a wheelie walker, which I now have in my possession. So I am gonna be having to use that for the next few days to help me get around. And for the short time that I've already used it when I was at the hospital, it is actually quite miraculous how helpful that little walker is. It made things feel so much better and I felt so much safer just when I was walking around. So I think that little red wheelie walker is gonna be my friend for the next few days. So now that I have made a, what turned out to be four hour trip home, I am completely exhausted and I think that I need to go and have a little rest for an hour or so just to try to recharge and then be able to get on with the rest of my day and evening. So I will update again when I feel a little bit more human. So I was just getting changed so I can go and put myself to bed for a little bit and I got a glimpse of my back in the mirror and nearly had a heart attack because oh my it is so red. No wonder my back feels so weird and sore and kind of stings and just feels weird. But at least the mystery is now solved and I for sure was not imagining that there was something not quite right with my back. I have no idea what all that redness is, but hopefully 
over the next few days it will settle down. Here is my walker that the hospital wanted me to use for the next week. This was just because I was having trouble being able to walk up straight because of where the injections and probes and everything went into my spine. So being able to use this walker relieves a little bit of the pressure and it helps me be able to get my balance properly. So I actually feel a lot safer walking around when I've got the walker with me than if I'm just trying to walk unaided. It also makes for a really good seat when I get a bit tired. Ta-da! Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Brooklyn's World and following this next part of my journey with a splenic nerve block.